Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and well, this is day 4 of Pokoween. Let's get going. So I'll be talking about my 16 uh, spooky means for Halloween. Let's go. So, my f so I'm kind of tentative about, one, about this one. It does seem promising but I don't know. But um, it's called The Dead's Children Playground by James Kane. A cemetery filled with instants of ghostly chilling yet, will a shot walk through the woods awake in a dark power? Kylie McKellen is eager to live a normal life, fleshly moved from Florida to Alabama and finally in remission from cancer, the optimistic nine-year-old is used to dodging her overprotective mom's warnings. So when a new playmate invites her to hang out, the happy girl thinks nothing of the playground being located in a graveyard for young victims of the Spanish flu and a local serial killer. Kayla McKillen hates starting over, forced to relocate after her little sister's recovery, the seven 19 year old despises her new home more when she sees a terrifying vision in the nearby crypt, and as kids around town start to fail, gravely ill, she begins to suspect there is something sinister at play. Tormented by frightening specters and the close appearances, Kylie turns to her older sibling for help. But as Kayla digs into the history of the haunting to ground, the twisted truth she discovers hint at the bloodthirst that can never be sated. Can they face the can they face down the marvel and force without tripping into their own graves? So it does sound good actually, but I'm a little bit iffy about it. I'm not sure if I personally will enjoy it. And similar with this book as well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna enjoy it. I thought I would share with you guys regardless. And that is So Witches We Became by Jill Bakunjanski. Honestly, the, tr the cover really intrigued me. That's the only reason why I picked it up. So, let's see what it's about. If boys will be boys, girls will fight back. For high school senior Nell and her friends, a vacation house on a private Florida island sounds like the makings of a dream spring break. But Nell brings secrets with her, secrets that fuse with the island's tragic history. Check them all with the curse that surrounds the island in a toxic ventral mist and the surrounding waters with an unseen devouring beast. Getting out of life means risking her friendships, her sanity, and even her own life. In order to save herself and her friends, Neil will have to face memories she rather leave behind, reveal the horrific truth behind the encounter that changed her life one year ago, and to face the shadow that's haunted her since childhood. Easier said than done. I did have to move because I'm not sure if you guys were able to see the spooky book, but hopefully you guys can see it. <laughs> My next book is The Drowning House by Shelley Price. A violent storm rushes a mysterious house onto rural Pacific Northwest Beach, stopping the heart of the only woman who knows what it means. Her grandson, Simone Culpepper, vanishes in the aftermath, leaving two of his childhood friends to calm down a small, isolated island for answers. But decades have passed since Melissa and Leah were close, if they were ever close at all. Now they will have to put aside all violence and grudges if they want to find or save the man who brought him together in the first place. And on the way, they will learn a great deal about the sinister house on the beach, the man who built it, and the evil he is bringing back to Maristone Island. My next one is Wilderness Reform by Matt Query and Harrison Query. 13 year old Ben is sent to a remote reform program for troubled teens by a Jeveline court judge. But when he arrives at the camp located on the edge of the vast wilderness of northwestern Montana, he immediately recognizes that there is something off about the consoles. They are too friendly and upbeat. Yet, Ben can tell there is an undercurrent of menace. As he gets to know the boys in his cabin, he soon discovers that each day they each have far more going for them than whatever crime landed, they landed them there. And each has a different critical skill, the one that can help them unearth what is really going on in this place and how to make it out alive. The engine ever closer to the truth and the hidden evil beneath the camp's surface will make itself known in order to deter them. My next book is Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch by Cody Crowley. Between her careless mom, her cheating ex-boyfriend, her rotten reputation around town, Annie Lane is used to be left behind, but she's never been left out for dead before. Until she wakes up to find her bodies being dumped on a mountain, rumored to raise the dead. Annie can't remember who killed her, but she will stop at nothing to figure it out 
and make them pay because girls like her don't get justice unless they take it for themselves. My next book is The Moon's All Black by Lee Mandelo. Leslie Moon is assigned to the back once township to of Spark Creek by the Frontier Nursing Service under its usual mandate, vaccinating the flock with birth babies and worthy of the judgments of churchy locals who look at him and see a failed woman. Forged in the fires of the Western Front that we born in, in the caves of Paris, Leslie believes he can handle whatever is thrown at him, but sparkling holds on darkness beyond his nightmare. And my next my next one is The Dark We Know by Wing Yi Lee. Aunt Stewart is a daughter Shan who swore never to return to Slater. Growing up, is a never felt at ease at the re in the repressive form of mining town, even before she realized she was bisexual. But after the death of two of her childhood friends, Slater went from feeling claustrophobic to suffocating, as it took off before the town could swallow her too, even though I met leaving behind everything she knew, including her last divine friend, Mason. When Ace's embrace of father kicks the bucket, she agrees to come back just long enough to collect inheritance, but then Mason, son of the local medium, turns up at the cemetery with a revelation and a plea. The friends were murdered by a supernatural entity, and he needs Ace to help stop the evil before it takes anyone else. Honestly, this book cover is so creepy. I love it. It's just really, just perfect like for Halloween. I mean, yes, please. And it's Portrait of a Shadow by Lydia Mitturi. A Mason sister, a mysterious boy, and a painting that holds the truth beneath its peeling edge. Ends is missing, but missing things can always be found. May knows this as a fact, even though the police investigation has come to a still a standstill, even though her parents are moving on, but when she goes to clean at her older sister's studio, she finds a mess of research and white canvas that seems even older than the autumn frame is, is set in. The closer May gets the canvas, the more difficult it is to pull her eyes away from its wet surface and heavy layers of white paint. In its peeling top corner, she is tempted to pull to see what's underneath, but she doesn't. Not. Yet. My next book is It's Only a Game by Kelsey Yu. When Maureen and Shan ran from her old life, she brought nothing with her, not even her real name. Now she lives in fear of her past and being discovered. But when her online gaming team is offered a tour of the Fever Game Company, Maureen can't resist accepting, even though she knows it might put her fake identity at risk. Then the queen of the game is murdered during the tour. Whoever killed her plans to flame Marina and her friends to the murder unless you win four months of a dangerous game. A game that requires them to lie, trespass, and steal. A game that could destroy everything Marina's worked so hard to build. A game that she might not survive. My next book is Island Witch by Amanda J. Atadisa. Being the daughter of the village Kapua or Demon Price, the mother is used to keep me mostly to herself. Influenced by the new religious practices brought in by the British colonizers, the villagers who once respected her father's craft have turned on the family. Yet they all still seem to call on him whenever supernatural despair his disturbances arise. Now a summon or something is viciously seizing upon men in the jungle, but instead of enlisting Amada's father help, the villagers have accused him of carrying out the attacks himself. As she tries as she tries to clear her father's name, Amara finds herself haunted by dreams that evilly predict the dark forces on her island, and she can't shake the feeling that it's all connected to the night she was recovering from strange illness, and woke up scared and confused to hear her mother's frantic. No one can find out what happened. My next book is Ghost Who Burned by M.K. Pagano. The summer before her senior year, Annie heard the worst words she could think of on her sister. An hours later, Fiona was found dead at the bottom of a ravine. The police ruled her death an accident, but Annie was never bought it. Her bully and progeny sister didn't slip and fall, she was pushed. Annie's number one suspect, Thatcher Montgomery, the rich boy down the street who always had a thing for Fiona. No one believes that, at least of all Thatcher's cousin Seth, Annie's childhood rival, and the boy she always loved to hate, arguing with Seth is easy, living with her own questionable choices and loving Seth the night Fiona died much harder. My next one is The Bad Omens by Melissa Albert. Goddess, Goddess, count to five, in the morning who is alive. In the course of a single winter's night, four people vanish without a trace across a small town. Noah's estranged best friend Becca is one of the lost. As Nola tries to attain the truth of Becca's disappearance, she discovers the darkness in her town past, as well as a swing of coded messages. Becca left for her to unravel. 
is closely Nora to a piece of local folklore, a legendary goddess of forgotten origins who played a role in Nora Becker's own childhood games. My next book is The Haunting of Velcroon by Gwendolyn Kisti. and Velcroon Vincenti was the topic of ocular theories, tabloid one-hour documentaries, and even some persuaded scientific investigations as the block of homes disappeared behind near impenetrable bell that only three survivors could enter, and only one has in the past 20 years, until now. Thalitha Velcroon has avoided anything to do with the tragedy that took her mother and eight-year-old sister, drifting from one job to another, never settling anywhere or with anyone. Feeling as trapped by her past as if she was still there in the small town, she so desperately wanted to escape from when a new researcher tracks her down and offers her to pay her to come back to enter. The vicinity Thalitha claims she's just doing it for the money. Of all the crackpot theories over the years, no one has discovered what happened the night Thalithia had her estranged former best friend Brett and Grace escaped her homes 20 years ago. Will she finally get the answer she's been looking for all these years, or is this just another dead end? So this is kind of an old book. Old book meaning it is from 1983. So we're going to see how this one goes. <laughs> it is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill and John, John Lawrence, who is the illustrator. What real reader does not yearn somewhere in the recesses of his or her heart for a really illiterate, first-class thriller, one that chills the body but warms the soul with plot? Uh, alas, we cannot give you our step, but soon set on the obligatory English moor on Isolate Causeway, the story has as its hero Arthur Capes, an up-and-coming young solicitor who has come north from London to attend the funeral and Selling the affairs of Mr. Alice de Drabel of Elon Marsh House, the routine formalities he anticipated, gave way to a tumble of events and secrets more sinister and terrifying than any nightmare. The walking chair in the deserted nursery, the Amy set of a pony and trap, a child scream in the fog, and most dreadfully, and for Kim's most tragically, the woman in black. I'm pretty sure that is a movie with Daniel Radcliffe. I'm pretty sure it's actually pretty good. My next book is Mona Run by Simone St. James. July 1995. April and Annie have taken a long turn. They're looking for the small resort town where they plan to spend their honeymoon. When they spot what appears a lone hitchhiker along the desert road, they stop to help. But not long after the hitchhiker gets into the car, they see the blood seeping from a jacket and a truck barreling down out the kiss lane line after them. When a hitchhiker dies at the local hospital, April and Eddie that find themselves in the crosshairs of the Cold Lake Falls Police. Unexplained murders have been happening along Atticus Line for years, and the cops finally have two witnesses who will easily become the only suspects. As April and Eddie start to dig into the history of the town and the horrible st stretch of road to clear the names, they soon learn that there is something supernatural at work, something that can not only tear the town and stack secrets, but apart. I think April and any down with it all. That's why you should never trust hitchhikers. You can help them, but trust them. That's a different story. <laughs> and my final one is her little flower, Shannon Morgan. That seen through twice, has lived all her 55 years in her family's ancestors' home, and rambling with Elizabethan Magnon in England's Lake District. No other living source resides there. But Francine is in a world that goes in threat manner, home harmless and familiar. Most beloved is Breen, the mysterious ghost girl who has been Francine's companion, companion since childhood. When Francine's estranged sister, Madeline, returns to Manor after years away, she brings with her a story that threatens everything Francine has always believed. It is a tale of cruelty and desperation, of terror and unbearable heartache. And as Francine learns more about the darkness of family's past, and the war she may have played in it, she realizes that, that confronting the truth may mean losing what she holds more dear. And that is all my spooky Halloween reads that I feel like they're spooky enough for you guys to read. Of course there is more, so let me know what Halloween reads you guys want to have. And please like, comment, and subscribe so I'm notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!